Harv, uh, being here at Old Rhinebeck and seeing you and seeing Bob Stepanek again today uh, brings back good memories of when we did the Whitehead research together. That's right. And I was wondering if for the German listening audience you could uh, recall uh, when we got into it and why we got into the research of Whitehead. Well, when we started the Connecticut Aeronautical Historical Association in 1959, we were aware that Augusta Whitehead was one of the early Connecticut aviation pioneers. We had read some snatches of information about him, but knew very little about him. We rec recognized that he was one of the men who would require considerable research uh, into his history and activities uh, to certainly at least record them. Some of our uh, uh, early members of the association uh, living in the Bridgeport area did uh, uh, some superficial research uh, collecting uh, some pictures and newspaper accounts. And what so date forth. was that, Harvey? Uh, that would date from about 1961-62. But it was not until you found a set of pictures uh, which were labeled Whitehead's, Whitehead's effort. Yeah. And you took them to, to the Bridgeport Post, which ran, had run some articles upon uh, the Connecticut Aeronautical Historical Association, and asked, what was this effort? Well, this got us all together. And uh, all of our interest was increased uh, about the Whitehead story. And you in particular uh, took a deep interest, and we encourage you to take a deep interest because we were uh, 50 miles up in Hartford, uh, Connecticut, and you were in the Bridgeport area where it all took place. And, and those who are living oh, here in the bed have, a better, have a better uh, opportunity to research and put the time in. And you very generously did well, it and have uh, done a splendid job of putting the research together. Because of our joint research, though, this would include Stella Randolph's work in the 30s, your work at CHA before I got into it, and then our joint work mutually together. Uh, how do you see Whitehead fitting into uh, the history of world aviation history. He is in Connecticut the man who made the first airplane, the first airplane engines, and uh, we believe that he was a very early earnest experimenter uh, attempting to solve the problem of flight. From the research that we, and particularly from what you did, and from my observation of it, it appears that he was in flight uh, in this very early period of 1901-1902, but not to the extent that some of the accounts give. I cannot accept the fact that he flew seven miles. Neither can I. But I can accept the fact that this airplane of his uh, may have flown 100, 200 feet, 10, 15 feet off the ground. And this is confirmed by the witnesses that uh, we have interviewed and talked with, and this seems reasonable for the state of the art in aviation at that time. How reliable would you say uh, the testimony of uh, Mrs. Catellus? Uh, was when she spoke with us that time. I was quite impressed with what she said. Obviously not uh, attuned to uh, uh, aeronautics or airplanes or the but capability, credible. but uh, I think that uh, she explained sincere. what she saw. Sincere yes. testimony. And yes, sincere testimony. She explained exactly what she saw. Well, your personal opinion, do you believe that Whitehead flew in the time of 1901-1902? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, there might have been some limitations to uh, uh, the flight, but well, the he, was the in, uh, he was in the air, in okay. my opinion. For the state of the art, what it was. For, uh, for, for short flights. Right. <coughs> uh, would you rate his engine work as noteworthy? 
For the time, yes. No point. Um, with Whitehead, uh, having been forgotten or ignored or whatever through the years, uh, I think the German audience would appreciate knowing if, in your opinion, uh, as a historian, a well-recognized historian, that Whitehead deserves a place of honor among the list of early pioneers in world history. I, I believe he deserves a place of honor, yes. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Did you put one question more? Why do you believe uh, does no more people as uh, a small group of uh, interested people uh, recognize the fact that he has flown? This is, uh, I think, because uh, uh, the uh, accomplishments of the Wright brothers that were very thoroughly documented by themselves at the time to prove uh, what they did. And through the years, this has become the, uh, the real basis of, of fact and interest and uh, acknowledgement. Uh, Whitehead, unfortunately, uh, apparently did not keep the records that uh, some of the other pioneers did, I mean the written records. Uh, and some of the photographic records that are sort of required by historians today to, to really establish the uh, veracity of what was done. Harvey it is looked at today more as, a, shall we say, circumstantial evidence of what he did. Harvey, <coughs> would you uh, yield to this point, though? I myself don't feel we can any further accuse Whitehead of not having kept records because we have found many records that he did keep that became dispersed through time and it was only because he did have those records and we inherited them <coughs> by finding them isn't it possible that he did keep other records which may have become lost as well it is possible that he may have kept them they may have been lost but they don't exist today. but others if they had been involved earlier than when we found them in the 1960s I feel very well convinced that uh, they could have found a lot more than we did. Well, that's true that people did not dig into Whitehead at an early date, which if they had, we might have had a better picture of what he did. This is not necessarily unique with Whitehead. It's happened to other pioneers where they, the records uh, just don't exist today, and it's very difficult to uh, uh, accept all their claims of what they did or did not do. <coughs> That's the whole point of museums today, uh, is at least our type of museum trying to collect that yeah. memorabilia. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was nice to see you here today. And, uh,